Well, it revealed very clearly and alarmingly to Redmond and his followers the, the full implications of what Bonner Law had said when he said that there were things more powerful than parliamentary majorities. Uh, that, in fact, the initiative was moving away from the parliamentary context uh, to the, the force or the threat of force. Uh, it revealed quite clearly also how very far down the road of defiance of parliament and of parliamentary majorities the Ulster Unionists and, indeed, their, their conservative allies were prepared to go. The nationalists in the south had already set up their own people's militia, the Irish volunteers, seen here marching in Kilkenny. Some 1,500 Mauser rifles had been run into the port of Hoth. So there were now three armies in Ireland, the nationalist, the loyalist, and the British. Civil war seemed inevitable, but greater events were to supervene. Europe at war. Britain and France locked in war with Germany. Would Carson commit the UVF to fight for Britain? All along they had been protesting their loyalty to Britain and to the Empire. They couldn't do other than offer their services in the war. But of course the fear that was at the back of their minds was that Asquith and the government might use this to go ahead and implement the bill, and the bill once the Ulster Volunteer Force no longer existed as that force, but was under the direct control of the army, the trump card had been taken from the Unionist hand. And the war dragged on into 1916. deadlocked. The Allied generals determined to break out. Nearly half a million men were moved to the front. For a week, the guns barked. On the 1st of July, 1916, amongst the first to go over the top at the Battle of the Somme was the 36th Ulster Division, as the UVF was now known. After the hubbub all day, once it got dusk, nobody knew where the front lines were, and the artillery just had to, had to cease. So they gathered in the wounded from both sides. The next day, that was the 2nd of July 1916, there was a roll call of the battalion. I happened to be present and only 67 answered their names from about 700. Whole units were wiped out, of course, in the attack. 5,500 casualties out of 9,000 men went over the top. Well, you were up against machine guns at short range. It was a ter terrific, stunning, crashing blow. I don't think we'd ever expected anything of the kind. There was hardly a family in Ulster that wasn't affected in some way, either by the loss of fathers or brothers or cousins or relatives of some kind, and really there was a cloud of sorrow over the whole province for not only days, for weeks, but for months afterwards. There was hardly a home in, North, in Northern Ireland. I would say Ireland for our country wasn't divided in 1916, but there was hardly a street or a home that didn't lose a father, a brother, or a, a sweetheart. I report a lot of uh, fathers and mothers would have said it wasn't worth it. But the men who had, who had undertaken to go and fight for the country felt it was necessary. We had to fight and show that this part of the world was in with the rest of the United Kingdom in being prepared to fight and fight 
they would do where and when it was necessary. This was a way of saying in unmistakable terms that could be quite clearly understood in England, we are British, uh, we are a part of Britain and we'll fight for the United Kingdom to which we belong. But other Irishmen fought for king and country. The British did not conscript in Ireland, but Redmond, leader of the Irish Nationalist Party, felt that it would show good faith to commit the Irish volunteers to the British cause. Such loyalty would assure home rule of a sympathetic hearing after the war. Nobody could say he was, he was slacking or that nationalist Ireland would not support Britain in her hour of peril, and that this, in turn, would be reciprocated by Britain's standing firm on the home rule issue. When the new British Viceroy, Lord Wimborne, arrived in Dublin in 1915, it was to preside over an Ireland divided in its attitude to the European war. Most Irishmen were loyal, but some took the traditional Republican view. A war that gave England difficulty was Ireland's opportunity. As the British paraded in the Dublin streets, Republicans were planning rebellion. 